Hey there friends and enemies, Joe here again and today I wanted to go over 5 rings you absolutely need to find if you are playing the Invader archetype in Remnant 2. All of these are very good on their own, but they synergize really well with the Invader specifically, so I'll tell you not only what they do, but also how they synergize and where to find them in general. First off, we have the Feedback Loop. Perfect Dodge triggers a 3.15 meter AoE Blast that deals 140 shock damage and applies Overloaded. You can actually make an entire build around this if you would like to, but it just works out really well if you are surrounded by enemies, facing a mini boss or a boss that specializes in melee damage and is up close all the time. There's a lot of the mini bosses that you'll fight that are just constantly trying to swing at you. And if you get that perfect dodge, you'll trigger the AOE blast. Where it gets really fun is with the void cloak ability for the invader, which automatically triggers a perfect dodge up to three times. This, again, will work out really, really well. You'll get that perfect dodge off, do the AoE blast, and you'll leave a decoy behind, which is another perk for the Invader archetype if you are running it as your prime perk. And it just synergizes really well. That one dodge will do so much, and it is phenomenal. Now, where to find this? Unfortunately, it is a random spawn on Nehrud, but definitely keep the eye open for this one because it can be very good it's one of my favorite rings in the game to be honest next up we have the assassin seal this one is very interesting reduces enemy awareness range by 25 percent increases all damage dealt to enemies not targeting the wear the last part is the important part for the Invader specifically reduces awareness range is nice because enemies obviously won't be targeting you if you are getting up closer to them before they're able to. This is especially nice if you are running an invader with a hunter, for example, but oftentimes enemies won't be targeting you if you are running your invader because you'll have a decoy up pretty consistently. That's where that 10% damage is going to be much more consistent on the invader than you might find with other classes unless you have maybe a handler that is able to taunt with the good boy but other than that you're really focusing on the invader having that decoy up that is taunting the enemies distracting them and allowing you to get that extra percent of damage very very consistently and you'll have the enemy awareness range down as well so you can get that sneak shot before they even know you're there it works out really well i like the combo a lot it it's not as perfect as the feedback loop in my opinion, but it does work very, very well. Then we have, oh uh, sorry, to find this you're actually beyond Losum, and that is going to be in the Council Tribunal behind the One True King statue. You're going to end up climbing up to the very top, jumping across the ledge, and you're going to see it behind the statue, so definitely go snag that. And yeah, it's a very good ring that I think works in multiple ways. So next up we have the Akari Warband. Perfect dodges increase critical chance by 15% and critical damage by 15% for 15 seconds. This, as you can see, would synergize super well with the feedback loop and the void cloak ability. So perfect dodges are something that you're going to want to try to do as often as possible anyway. But knowing that you're going to have automatic perfect dodges really consistently just means that your critical chance and your critical damage is going to be increased by a lot. So regardless of what you're doing, if you're using a weapon that benefits from critical damage, if you're using a build with a gunslinger that benefits from critical hit and critical damage, that's where this thing is really going to shine. Luckily, this one is super easy to get. You can buy it from Cass in Ward 13. The only downside being that it is the shop is rotating and it is randomized, so you're not going to always have it available. I highly recommend always looking at her shop to see what is available because there could be some really good rings in there that people are sleeping on. Next up, we're going to have the Vestige of Power. This one is interesting to me after 7 seconds of not being damaged. Increases range and melee damage by 10%. Once again, if you activate that Void Cloak, if you activate any of the invader abilities and you have your decoy taunting enemies, you're not going to be taking damage for a while, so you're going to get that increased damage uptime very, very consistently. And again, if you pair this with the Assassin Seal, and decrease their awareness, and you're going to be uh, targeted less, this is going to be perfect. I think this is one that a lot of people sleep on because 7 seconds is a long time, but one, when you first go into a fight, you're going to have this damage up already, and then when you have your decoys out and you're as long as you're avoiding the aoe damage you're going to consistently be doing 
damage because you're not going to be taking damage so that bonus is going to be there pretty consistently and that's one of the main things that i really do like about the vestige of power i think it is highly underrated especially for certain builds now this one can be found as a random spawn on yesha so once again you're gonna have to go hunting for it hopefully you get lucky but it's not as readily available as something like the assassin seal and then finally we have the Endara's Endless Loop. This one is very interesting for me because as much as I like it, I think it's very situational for some people. After sprinting for two seconds, the wearer gains 1.5 health regeneration per second upon or until they stop sprinting. Now, one of the nice things about the abilities for the invader is that it really benefits movement right so if you look at like reboot for example when the backup is active increases movement speed by 15 percent and damage reduction etc so essentially you're going to try to be moving all the time same thing with wormhole and then void cloak you're going to want to keep on the move as often as possible and so because of that you're really going to benefit from something that is just auto regenerating your health consistently as you are moving around the battlefield especially if your secondary is something like uh if you're running your second archetype is like an engineer or a summoner something where you're, you can just benefit from passive damage you can also trigger your decoy and then keep running and then do the damage after you fully healed up and so i think this one works out really really well and it's very consistent on the invader compared to some of the other subclasses you're going to want to sprint often with this archetype and that's why i think it works out really well you're going to find this in Endar's End on Yesha. It's always there, so definitely go hunt that down. I'm going to leave you with some gameplay of footage of me taking on the Corrupted Ravager with some people. This one was a very fun fight, and I don't think I struggled with it at all. It was a lot of fun to run the Invader, and I think it's an underrated archetype. At this point, I see a lot of people sticking to other ones that are their favorites, but this one I actually enjoy quite a bit myself. Anyway, let me know if I missed any, if there's any that you're running with the Invader archetype in the comments down below. My name is Jopa. I hope you have a good one, and I'll catch you all later.